Hi, this is Nancy Ralsima with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. We're ready today to learn a new technique for the block Sunset Over Dublin. So part of it is hanging behind me, but this is the book that is available. This is the Sunset Over Dublin book that's available on our website, onpoint-tv. It is a 120-page book, the largest book I have to date, and it's got 39 different 8-inch blocks in the book. This is what it's going to look like on the inside, so very, very detailed. This is the block that we're going to do, but I do want to show you that when I'm working on the book, on blocks, I actually will store those blocks within the book on the page of that block. So in just something fun if you want to do it that way kind of keeps all of your blocks together and because these are only eight inch blocks it only sticks out a little bit on a book this size so we're going to work on the Susanna block today so I can teach you the square in a square technique I have all of my pieces cut and these are the two pieces that create the square in a square so this is a larger square that I think is three inches and something and then these are a three inch square and these need to be pre-cut so normally I do like to do the sewing before I do the cutting but with a technique like square and a square that's just not possible so in this case we do have to cut this on the diagonal which is another reason that I like to have my fabrics pre-sized so that when I'm working with this very by this very stretchy bias edge I know it's not going to stretch all out of whack so these will go on to our large larger square so the first thing I like to do is take and just create some little creases that tell me where the middle of this square is so folding it both ways now you could press it but it doesn't need to be that big of a little notch or a crease but I've got my little creases there and then you can do the same things on your triangles this will help help you center the triangle up on the square so there's the little center I'm going to match it up with this little crease and put my pin in there and then I'm going to do that on the other side so you can put pin and get the two sides ready before you go to sew there he is centered there now we go to our sewing machine so at my sewing machine, I have my guidelines for quilting here to help me with my scant quarter inch, keeping everything lined up, and I have moved my needle over to find that scant quarter inch. If you want to find out more about the scant quarter inch, if your needle cannot move, we discussed that in the very first block, which is the Road to Oklahoma block. So I'm going to sew now. I've got my leader, and that's really important, especially when I have these little triangle tips hanging out there so that it does not get sucked down into my machine. And in this case, you can take your pins off because you're not matching a seam. And then come with your second leader. Cut that off. And then spin it around and go to the other side. Now we go to the ironing board. Now I'm going to always set my seams first before I press it. You've seen me do this a hundred times. And then flip that block over. The pressing solution for a square and a square is always to press it out to those triangles. Now I'm going to put the triangles on the other side. So I did just press out those little creases I had pre-made. There, now they're back. And now my two new triangles so just folding it to create the little press so it can match it up so square and a square blocks can also be called snow um, snowball blocks people will do these as snowball blocks there is a lot of different ways to make a square and a square um, this is just the easiest way that doesn't use any special tools because there are some rulers out there specifically made for making this kind of a block so going to sew on my next triangles and flip him around. Now 
Now this square in a square block supposed to is supposed to measure four and a half inches, but we need to make sure that that's the case. So after he's pressed out, pull out your smaller ruler so that you can measure. And on my smaller ruler, I did already place some glow tape at the four and a half so that I know that I'm going to be positioning it quite right. Now, right now, the block measures about four and three quarters, which is what I would expect because I did cut these triangles larger than they needed to be so that I was going to be able to trim this down to closer to perfect. When you're trimming this, you want to be very, very cautious of the point of the yellow in the middle. You want that point to end up being a quarter of an inch from the edge of the block. So when I'm placing my ruler on it, and I'm going to do two sides at once in this case, I'm going to place the dot of the two and a quarter. So on my ruler, this comes down to a dot on an omni grid. If I place that quarter inch dot on that point, then come to the right hand side and try to do the same thing. So I've got this one at two and a quarter and this one at two and a quarter. Then I can trim the right and the top. And when I turn this now, there's two things you want to be careful of. One, that you don't lose the two points on the other two sides, but also that you don't trim the block any smaller than four and a half. Now, if it's a little bit big, that's okay. You can deal with that when you're putting the block together, but you don't want it to be any smaller. And this one's just going to turn out as nice as I could ever have expected. I'm actually right on four and a half. And when I look at that point, that quarter inch, two and a quarter inch point right there, it's at the exactly where I need it and also on the right hand side. So this block is about as perfect as I can make it. Trust me, that doesn't happen every time. Just happened to do it because we were recording this. All right, so there is the start of my block. When I come back, we'll lay the entire block out and I'll show you how I'll construct that. So I have the basic parts made. You didn't need to see me sew these squares together, but this is the first row and then these two on the sides and then the bottom row. So now I need to piece the two sides on. Now when you're doing that, one thing for you to consider if you wanna be pretty fussy about something is to try to get that point of the yellow on the middle to match up with that seam. That would be perfect. We know there is no perfect, but that would be something we would try for. So when I would do that, I would pick it up and open up the block so then I can see the seam on the bottom and the point on the top and line those up and then put a pin in. And when you put a pin in, don't put the pin right through the bulk of the seam. Instead, float it underneath the seam and then take a bite. That will keep it in place. And in this block, it looks like it's pretty close to the two sides are pretty close to each other. So I'm not going to put pins on the two sides, but I am going to come around. Let's make sure I put that in the right direction and put the next one in. So again, just kind of opening up that seam, matching up the yellow point with the seam on the pink and red part row. All right, now I'm gonna go to my sewing machine. And when I'm sewing this section, I am gonna sew with the, the square and a square on the top so that I can see this intersection. And I want my needle to just come just to the right of that intersection. That'll compensate for the scant quarter inch. So sewing right there, yep, just to the right. Getting this one to line up a little bit better. And off onto my leader. Cut that. And go to the other side. So be sure that you don't go too far past that cross of that thread, otherwise you'll end up cutting off some of your point. All right, now back here to my iron for the pressing. 
The way that you want to press the seam is the point of least resistance. Well, the truth is, is you have a bulky seam here and you have a bulky seam here. So it's a matter of deciding which is the least of the bulkies and press into that direction. So in this case, the least of the bulky would be to press it out. So I'm going to start with this on top, set that seam, slide it up, and then the one on the bottom. Now this then will work with the pressing solution that I have for the top block. If we flip these over, I had you specifically press these rows with the background square to the middle because I knew that this would be pressed out. So just pay attention to things like that so that your seams are as not bulky as possible. Now for this one, I am going to pin this intersection in the other intersection, making sure things match up. And then do the same thing in the middle, kind of unfolding it, trying to get the point to line up with that seam. And pin that. Now I'm going to go and sew these, and when I come back, we'll look at the final block. So the block is all done. Everything is pressed nicely in the back, looks really good. Because I pre-dunked all my fabrics, I don't need to do any additional spray sizing. The seams are lying pretty flat. But we can square up this block. Now, up until now, on all of the blocks, there's been little points on the outside edges that I've told you to be very careful not to cut off. So we've always used our smaller ruler lining those points up at the quarter of an inch. Well, if you noticed with this block, there's no points on the outside edge. The points are only on the inside. So we actually could square this block up right to eight and a half inches. Now, first, you need to see what size it is. And this block is just about eight and a half inches. There is the littlest bit sticking out, so I'm just going to line it up, just trying to look at some of the horizontals and verticals. And I'm going to square up the right hand side, the top, spin that around. Oops. And now I'm going to tuck this right into eight and a half inches on the bottom and the left hand side and trim that. This is the only block in the entire quilt that you can square up that way. All of the other blocks, you have to be very cautious of the points on the end. So that is our Susanna block, showing you how to do the square in a square technique. There's a lot more to come, so I hope you will continue to join us as we start posting these new videos. As I said, they'll be about 16 or 18. Not quite sure yet, because we're not done recording, so we never know how long it's going to take. The book is available on our website. The tools are available on the Fireside Quilts website. I hope you've subscribed already, and be sure you hit that notifications button. We do have a Facebook page, and our Facebook page is generally where we'll have viewers posting um, projects that they finished or different things going on. So please jump onto our Facebook page. It's the On Point Dash TV and Quilting with Nancy. Have a great day.